have you ever thought about Ryan Day not calling plays at Ohio State? Well, there's a good chance Ryan Day will not have that responsibility the next time Ohio State steps on the field. You are Locked On Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Buckeye fans? Welcome back to another episode of Locked On Buckeyes for the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. It is Wednesday, January 4th in the year 2023, and I want to thank you for making Locked On Buckeyes your first listen or first watch of every single day. During this episode, we will make a case for... And a case against Ryan Day giving up the responsibility of calling plays for the offense. And who might be the best candidate to call plays for Ohio State in 2023. But before we get to any of that, on college game day before the Rose Bowl, Kirk Herbstreet, there was a clip that went around of Kirk Herbstreet talking and discussing something that came up during a recent production meeting prior to the Peach Bowl. Now, Kirk Herbstreet knows there are things that are going to be said in there that he cannot let out. It's insider information. And this is something that I'm glad he did not let out prior to the game, but it came out after the game because it would have been more questions for Ryan Day during his final preparation period for the game against Georgia. But Kirk Herbstreet stated that Ryan Day is considering relinquishing play-calling duties in 2023. Now, when you first hear that, you're thinking, oh, wait, 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 Ryan Day, a great offensive mind. Ryan Day called a phenomenal game against Georgia. Ryan Day is good with the quarterbacks. We want Ryan Day as a play caller, the head coach, the signal caller. We want him doing it all. The CEO, uh, the OC, unofficial, I mean, OC of the team, um, overseer of everything, recruiting, NIL. We want Ryan Day doing everything. But then when you take a, but then when you take a step back, and realize what Kirk Herbstreit said, it makes a lot of sense. And I don't believe Ryan Day makes that statement to Kirk Herbstreit without having an idea of who he believes the next play caller will be. May it be a promotion from within the program, or may it be someone that you hire to come in to be the OC. I don't believe Ryan Day makes that statement and lets that out without having a good idea of the person who he wants to be there, their philosophy, who they are, the track record as a coach, um, players that they've coached, coaches that they've coached with. I just firmly believe that Ryan Day already knows who the next signal caller is going to be. I don't, I don't say I know who it is, that he knows who it is, but you don't just let that stuff out the bag to someone like Kirk Herbstreit. And no matter if Herbie said it on live TV or if he just kept it to himself, said it between him and Chris Fowler and guys off air, kind of those things, those conversations that don't get out whatever it is. This makes sense, a lot of sense. And it makes me think, does Ryan Day already know who his next OC is going to be? Because I don't believe Ryan Day is going to hire or promote somebody to be offensive coordinator. He relinquishes the – uh, responsibility of being the play caller, then all of a sudden he said he has a receivers coach or a passing game coordinator or the run game coordinator, whoever that might be, who is not the OC to be the play caller. I don't believe that at all. But I believe this is a great move for Ryan Day if this is where he's going to go. Can't get too deep into why I believe that just yet. But Ryan Day made a statement back when Kevin Wilson. Well, it was announced that Kevin Wilson was going to take the Tulsa job. It came out, and Ryan A discussed and said, we're going to wait until after the bowl season, after the season is over, to think about and consider and make any promotions or hirings about who the next offensive coordinator is going to be. And I do believe if Ryan Day is not going to be the play caller, the person who is going to call the plays will be the offensive coordinator. 
Unlike last year, Ryan Day hired Jim Knowles during bowl prep. It was the Rose Bowl, the granddaddy of them all. Still my favorite bowl game of all now. If the Orange Bowl was still in the Orange Bowl Stadium and the Cotton Bowl Classic was in the Cotton Bowl Stadium, the Orange Bowl Stadium is no longer here. Cotton Bowl Stadium is still there, but they don't use it for the bowl game anymore. My thoughts might be a little bit different, but the Rose Bowl is the Rose Bowl, the granddaddy of them all. Everybody loves California. People love the weather, the backdrop, the scenery, the sunset. It makes it amazing. So last year, Jim Knowles was hired during bowl prep. Right? They said, no, not right now, not this year. And I get it, man. I get it. I understand where Ryan Day is coming from. If this is the move he thinks he needs to make. And I understand why Ryan Day might think this is the move that's the best decision and best for the Ohio State football program. But then there's a question. Who is it? Like, if you're going to make that statement, who is the guy? Who is that person? Why would Ryan Day make that statement now? Because Ryan Day is preparing for next season before this season is over. Not just via the recruiting, not just via the NIL stuff, not just via the transfer portal. As the Buckeyes picked up a transfer safety from Syracuse, we'll discuss more about him later in the week. But Ryan Day is currently preparing for next year, and he realizes it might be in the team's best interest if he was not calling the plays for the Ohio State Buckeyes in 2023. I think there's a confidence in this statement, not only in Ryan Day's ability to be a better coach, head coach, overseer, CEO, CEO for the program, but also a confidence in whoever the next person might be. He believes that the personnel that at the team has or will have, uh, this person is going to be able to do whatever they want with the Ohio State football team in 2023. There is a case for Ryan Day making this decision and a case against Ryan Day possibly making this decision of him calling plays in 2023 or him not calling plays in next season. We'll discuss both of those both of those next right here on Locked on Buckeyes. This episode is brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from pro football to college bowl season to basketball, we've got it all at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can even find those at BetOnline as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. BetOnline, where the game starts. Sports betting is now legal in Ohio, and Locked On has a perfect show to help new and seasoned gamblers. Download and subscribe to Locked On Bets for daily picks and analysis wherever you get your podcasts. So a case for and a case against Ryan Day potentially moving away from calling the plays for Ohio State. Think back to what Ryan Day has done as a play caller, uh, being a part of the Ohio State coaching staff from 2017 until now, the JT Barrett final year to Dwayne Haskins, the record-breaking season, 2019 getting to the playoff, 2020 getting to the national championship game, last year winning the Rose Bowl, this year getting back to the playoff. Ryan Day has done some phenomenal things. One loss, excuse me, two losses in back-to-back -back seasons. 2020, there was only one loss. 2019, there was only one loss. 2018, the three games that he coached as an interim coach when Urban Meyer was suspended, one, two, three wins, two start the season that go right to Ryan Day's win-loss record. Ryan Day's a good head coach, man. I, I want to go out and say he's a great head coach. And great head coaches make moves and make changes. Sometimes you might say, ah, it doesn't make sense. But then there are times their moves make a lot of sense. And I think it would make sense for Ryan Day if he says, hey, it's time for me to not call the plays anymore. It's a better thing for me for this team, for me to take more of an overseer role, a CEO role, more than I already have, and say, hey, this is one thing when preparing for the next game that I don't have to worry about. I mean, that I don't have to come out and say, oh, I got, I got, my, I got my chart here, I got my plays, 
And uh, in the game, I'm, I'm, I'm scribbling stuff down, I'm taking notes. But it, even leading up to the game, I got my, got my, got my, got my call sheet. <laughs> got that right here with me. And uh, I'm not going anywhere from it. I'm not deviating from what I have done in my preparation. That preparation part is key. Because think about it. Think about at your job. If all, all of a sudden they handed you something, and let's say you are – uh, a manager at your job. You're not the manager who does the scheduling, but all of a sudden you have to manage your job, do your job, and then get the scheduling down. Now, the scheduling might be easy, but then it comes around to times during holidays, people take time off, or the summer, people take time off, and you got to shuffle things. So you're already jam packed and overloaded with all of the things you have to do in your regular job as a manager of a restaurant or uh, 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 uh J.C. Penney or Kohl's or uh, Target. I don't know why those stores came into my head, but they did. And all of a sudden, you go from this to scheduling and this and then. All of a sudden, you went from just your everyday duty to five more things. You realize, man, this is a lot. And I think Ryan Day is realizing he might be better utilized by not having all the extra five things that he has Figuratively, figuratively speaking, but by handing things off to people he trusts, people that he knows will do a good job, people that he knows that can allow him to allow him to be more an overseer. Yeah, somebody might have to coach a position group and call plays. That is normal. I mean, to be honest with you, yeah, Ryan Day's a head coach, but he is very, very, very hands-on with the quarterbacks. Yes, Corey Dennis is a quarterback's coach, but Ryan Day is kind of a quarterback's coach of his own. So you, you got to, I always say, does it make sense for Ryan Day to step back and have less of a role on game day and to not just be all hands on on the offense but for him to be more involved with the defense? Absolutely. At the same time, there are some of you saying, and even me in the moment, initially I was like, no, nah, man. I want Ryan Day to keep calling plays. I want Ryan Day to continue doing what he is doing. I understand the personnel and the injuries and um, not being able to do everything you want to via the running back injuries and not having in Jigba and uh, losing Kate Stover in the in the Peach Bowl and lo losing Marvin Harrison Jr., losing Mayan Williams, Travion Henderson, uh, Evan Pryor. I mean, you're you're a, if you take this whole offense fully healthy, Ryan Day can do whatever he wants, man. Well. For the most part, there's a lot of things Ryan Day will do if this, if this team is fully healthy. Unfortunately, it's not. But I do think, though, a coach can get overwhelmed, can have too much on his plate. Remember I mentioned recruiting a while ago, and I mentioned recruiting a lot. This is a big recruiting time period. We just got done with the early signing period. The other signing period will be coming here shortly. And Ryan Day is currently, you know, that recruiting, man. <laughs> recruiting, pitch never, recruiting pitch is ever-changing. Every recruiting pitch, you got you got to stay up with the times, man. You got to know the lingo of these youngsters. Now, you don't have to adopt said lingo of the youngsters, but you got to know this stuff because you're coaching them. You're a 40-year-old man coaching 18 to 22-year-olds, and you have to go in their homes and recruit them to play football in Columbus. Add that to the play calling. Like, that alone is tough. You add in the NIL, add in the rule changes, add into the the, the expansion of the conference, which really isn't that isn't so much to Ryan Day, um, you might say, but there's a lot that goes into it. A lot. Ryan Day did a phenomenal job of calling plays against Georgia. Phenomenal. I mean, it was one of the one of those games where it was just like, his enthusiasm on the sideline, he was free, he was loose, he was comfortable. He knew if Georgia did this, Ohio State could do this to exploit Georgia's hole or Georgia's mishap in that defense. And Dot Ryan Day was just dialing it up left and right, dotting all the I's, crossing all the T's. Things were looking good for the Ohio State Buckeyes. And that's one thing I think in my mind, initially, it was like, no, man, Ryan Day knows what he's doing.
Ryan Day is a great play caller. Ryan Day is someone that I understand there's a lot of this play. I get that he has a lot going on. I firmly understand that it might be too much for some, but it seems like Ryan Day has everything under control. And then I take a step back and I'm trying to make a case against Ryan Day calling the plays. And I go back to my case for um, a, a, a case against Ryan Day relinquishing really play calling. Then it's a case four, and it's like, well, uh, wouldn't it be better for the defense if he was not calling the plays? Yeah, there's a major case against Ryan Day call, really giving up play calling. Just watch the Georgia game. That's a case against Ryan Day giving up that duty. But a case for Ryan Day giving up that duty, look at that defense, man. He's not the head coach of the defense. He's the head coach of the football team. Supersedes the head coach of the defense. That's who the head coach of the defense reports to. And maybe, just maybe, having more hands-on with the defense and allowing the defense to know more about what Ryan Day sees when a certain position uh, formation comes out and certain uh, personal grouping comes out, maybe two bags, zero tight ends. What happens? What do you think is going to wh – what can happen there? What if it's two, two bags, zero tight ends, but you have a tight end – split out so it's technically 21 personnel but the lineup in the formation is not 21 personnel 21 traditional 21 personnel two backs one tight end what do you do there and ryan day can have a better hand in helping the defense be better prepared because i think it's one hole with this defense is they need some assistance and preparation for games not just Player development, team speed. I think it's overall something that Ohio State needs better at, especially at the secondary. But also, I think they need to just need someone else to help them better understand what offenses are doing. Who better to do that than Ryan Day? It's hard for him to do that if he's calling plays because so much of his time during the week, no matter if it's in practice or outside of practice in his office, so much of his time is dedicated to the recruiting. I am comfortable. Currently comfortable. If Ryan Day says, no, I don't want to call plays, I'm comfortable with that. I think it's a great move for the football team. Who might call plays in 2023 if Ryan Day is not doing it? I got three names on a piece of paper that three names that are on my mind about people that who could take over this responsibility from Ryan Day. We will discuss that next right here on Locked Up Luck, guys. This episode is brought to you by Billiards Plus. Billiards Plus has the best selection of pool tables, game tables, shuffleboard tables, and more. And the best service in Central Ohio. Billiards Plus also can set you up with a brand new top-of-the-line grill that will last for generations. We, know, we all know how hard it is with the supply chain issues this year and getting certain things shipped on time. So when it comes to ordering that one big gift for Christmas, Check out Billiards Plus and get there early this year. Pick something out and get it shipped in time that fits you and the time period you want to hand the gift out. It's a gift the whole family will enjoy year-round. Billiards Plus carries the best pool tables from Brunswick, Ohasen, Canada, Billiards, and more. Plus, top-of-the-line grills from PK, Napoleon, Memphis, and LaGriddle. That will be the last grill you own. Seriously, these grills stand the test of time. No matter the season, Billiards Plus has you covered for all your indoor and outdoor entertainment needs. Visit their showroom on Dublin Center Drive in Dublin. Check them out at billiards-plus.com. Billiards Plus, family owned and operated for generations. Three possible names of individuals that if Ryan Day says he's not calling plays in 2023, that could take over that duty for the Ohio State Buckeyes. The first one is not Brian Hartline. It's Justin Fry. Now, you might want to say, Jay, why in the world did Justin Fry, the newcomer to the coaching staff, instead of someone who played at Ohio State, has been a coach at Ohio State for quite a long time, he played in the NFL, had a decent NFL career, he's a fan favorite, he's a great recruiter, he's a great developer of talent. Why wouldn't you say Brian Hartline? I think. <clears throat> that when it comes to Justin Fry, something tells me that Justin Fry was brought in here for this duty to eventually be the new head coach, excuse me, the uh, new uh, the offensive coordinator at Ohio State. Justin Fry played college football 
at Indiana from 02 to 06, but was an offensive tackle. And he has been in coaching ever since at Indiana, at Florida, at Temple, at Boston College, at UCLA, and now at Ohio State. During his tenure at Ohio State, two things stick out. There's a lot of things that stick out from him. But at UCLA, from 2019 to 2021, Justin Fry was the offensive coordinator and offensive line coach. He also coached with Chip Kelly, somebody that Ryan Day played for at New Hampshire and coached with in the National Football League. I also believe they coached together in college as well. So there's already a connection and there's a trust, not only that he could get from his time with Justin Fry, because I do believe Justin Fry and Ryan Day were on the same coaching staff, in I believe, at Boston College, but also I do believe that Justin Fry's experience as being an offensive coordinator previously at UCLA under Chip Kelly. We all know how Chip Kelly's offense is, how it moves. I think that that's something that Ryan Day had in the back of his mind and said, hey, man, we're going to bring you here. This is not going to be a one-stop shop, a one-year stop, one a one-and-done type of deal. We have future plans for you, future promotions. Just stick around with me, and things will come your way. I don't know how he is as a play caller because he didn't call plays at UCLA. Chip Kelly calls the plays at UCLA. But I don't think Ryan Day would hand Justin Fry, the associate head coach for offensive title, job title, if there was not a thought of if Ryan Day's not calling plays, Justin Fry is the guy. There's more to it. We can look at the numbers at UCLA when Fry was the offensive coordinator. I, I do know two of the two of the three years, UCLA averaged over 200 yards rushing per game. I think one year they averaged, I think one year was 220. I think one year was like 210, 215. I know, I know one year was at least 220 rushing yards on the ground, which Buckeye fans would love right now. Like, oh my, running the ball consistently, an OC who could coach the O-line and both can be successful. Hello, we want that. I think that there's trust. There's a lot of trust in ju for Justin Fry from Ryan Day. And I think that a lot of things are lining up. Kevin Wilson's gone. The OC job is open. You don't have to bring in and hire somebody else. Just promote Justin Fry. Make him your OC, O-line coach, and also allow him to call the plays. Secondly is Brian Hartline. Now, I, I could say Tony Alford. Don't really know. I could say uh, Corey Dennis. I don't know how involved Corey Dennis is with the um, complete game plan um, as far as, like, I know he has input, but is he ready to call plays? I don't know. I don't know if any of the top two guys at Ohio State are ready to call plays, but Brian Hartline, his ability to recruit, his ability to develop talent, he's a Buckeye. Brian Day wants to keep him in, at Ohio State. I think he is someone that you have to at least consider in this conversation that if Ryan Day relinquishes play calling duties, Brian Hartline is in the conversation. My first gut, my gut and feeling is Justin Fry. Still, first time play caller. Could go great, could go wrong. There could be a time where Ryan Day says, no, buddy, I'm taking over these reins. I'm calling plays once again. That could happen. But ultimately, I think you might want to just promote with, from within. They promoted Coach Key to tight ends coach when Kevin Wilson left because Kevin Wilson also coached the tight ends. Great promotion. Happy for Coach Key. But I still think, man, if you're going to promote from within, you cannot eliminate Brian Hartline's name from the conversation. Last but not least is somebody from outside of the program. And it would be a similar thing as Ryan Day hiring Jim Knowles a year ago. Jim Knowles was one of the hottest, if not the hottest, defensive coordinators in the country a year ago at Oklahoma State after doing what he did in Stillwater, Oklahoma, and helping the defense get better and better and better during his tenure there as a D.C. for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. It's Garrett Riley. Garrett Riley has one more game to coach. He's currently the offensive coordinator. Currently the offensive coordinator at TCU. And I do believe that He's a different type of coach than his brother Lincoln Riley. Not a bad coach, but a different coach. Different offenses. I like what I see from TCU. I like what I see from Max Duggan. I like what I see from these boys. I like how they're making plays. I like how they're shocking the world. 
I like that. Hey, maybe you want to go for the underdog and root for TCU to beat Georgia. Go for it. And because of Garrett Riley, there's a good chance that could happen. Georgia's really good. TCU's really good. Be locked in and watch the game on January 9th. Just a, just a free uh, a free infomercial. Watch the game, man, and see what Garrett Riley does with his TCU offense. Because if Ryan Day wants to go out and get one of the hottest names at the position who's currently who's already doing it, go out there and get Garrett Riley. Go get him. He will get to work with a new quarterback. I do believe Stroud's gone. No official announcement yet, but I do believe Stroud is gone. You get a quarterback. You get to work with these running backs. You get to work with these young receivers and receivers that, that are already there. You get to learn from Brian Hartline and Justin Fry. Tony Alford, Ryan Day, it's great. Corey Dittich, it's great. If you want to go out there and get the hot name, get Garrett Riley. If you want to go and stay in-house, Justin Fry is my first choice, then Brian Hartline. What say you? Do you think Ryan Day should give up play calling duties in 2023? Leave your comment in the YouTube comment section. If you think Justin Fry or Brian Hartline should be the guy, tell me who and why. If you think they should go after Garrett Riley, tell me yes he's a guy and tell me why we're here to have fun we're here to enjoy each other's company all centered around the ohio state football team tomorrow the ohio state basketball team has a big game against the purdue boilermakers the once undefeated purdue boilermakers could lose two in a row as they come to the shot on thursday evening to face chris holtman's voice who are, chris holtman's boys who are playing really good basketball this season you can follow me on twitter at jstevens07 you can send all of your emails to jstevens317 at gmail.com we're out of here on this wednesday hump day edition of locks on book guys we'll be back tomorrow with john garcia jr discussing two really good recruits kj bolden donovan harbour if you have not heard of them google them look up look up some highlights we'll discuss them tomorrow with john garcia jr right here on locked on buckeyes your daily one-stop shop to get all the news about your ohio state buckeye football team